this is the, the Scottish Epilepsy Centre, which is the only inpatient assessment unit in Scotland for epilepsy, and about a third of our patients have non-epileptic seizures. Most of the patients get referred to us because they, there is a diagnostic question. So there are people th that had a diagnosis of epilepsy and then there is some doubt. Some people have an attack disorder and no one's quite sure what's wrong with them. So before you got here, what did you think was going on? I was, I was kind of jumping into the, the unknown, but um, we, we weren't sure if I was having like the non-epileptic seizures or both, so the reason for coming here was to try and determine that. There are certain features that we would look for that will tell us that maybe this is unlikely to be um, epileptic, so in general epileptic seizures are fairly short, whereas non-epileptic attacks are a bit longer. Um, epileptic seizures would have a pattern of movement, the tonic-clonic jerks, whereas people with um, non-epileptic attacks will have different patterns. Um, we've got, you know, some signs that would tell us this is less likely to be an epileptic seizure. People keeping their eyes shut um, throughout, moving their head from side to side, maybe being very emotional during or after. All this would point us more towards a non-epileptic attack. But saying that, you can have all of this in an epileptic seizure. So it really is more a conjunction of things. Ultimately, a test that is very helpful, and that's what you'll see in the unit that we do, is the is video EEG. So essentially what we do is we tr capture the person having a, an attack, and um, that gets correlated with the brain waves. I've been here for three weeks. I think I've got, I've got a week left. It's a long process, because <laughs> I also discovered with me while I was I like had all the wires on um, that I've got a fast heart rate, so now they're trying to see if that could be related to the seizures and things, or if that's a separate condition. <laughs> the bottom line is there is not a single test that would absolutely tell you one way or the other, um, and that's why there is this issue about the misdiagnosis and why a lot of people with non-epileptic attacks are labelled with epilepsy to start with. So there are the cameras up there. Too. Yeah, and the microphones. Have you ever had a seizure in your room? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, I'm asleep. I had one during the night. But there's also like um, like bed sensor things. So like, if you start seizing on the bed, it alerts to them, and then they can have a look in the camera and come to your room. When I first started to work at the epilepsy centre, I realised what a, a significant part of the epilepsy population were being misdiagnosed. I think people are over-treated, people are receiving lots of, of medication, not only for the misdiagnosis of epilepsy, but lots of pain medicines, you know, side effects from medicines to give them other problems and then they get more medicine for that. So people end up on a whole cocktail of medication because the, the core the problem isn't being treated. It isn't being treated at all. Diagnostic delay of non-epileptic attacks is about seven years, so potentially a young woman could be seven years on a drug that could maybe affect the fetus, interfere with her um, contraception, and it's something that they don't need at all because it's not going to treat the non-epileptic attacks because um, the bottom line, the, the, the problem is a different one. People become very disabled. I think people become very disabled by the kind of non-epileptic nature of some of these attacks. Families become um, become carers, husbands become carers and first aiders. It changes the dynamics of, of every relationship really. Your children become carers of parents, um, so everything changes really, has a very significant impact.